Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Scorpio Field County's live webinar on why you need humor in your marketing. I'm Bob Hogan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County. I'm going to be your host today, and our presenter today is Gene Bronstein. And more on Gene in just a minute, but first, uh, some brief information on SCORE. SCORE is a national organization with over 320 offices across the country and over 11,000 volunteers. Um, we are part of the Small Business Administration, the SBA. And locally here in SCORE Fairfield County, we have over 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry, process, and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. We offer one-on-one -on -one counseling, um, and that can be by face-to-face, -face, telephone, email, or uh, video. We offer about 150 to 160 educational workshops and webinars throughout the year. And thirdly, we offer extensive resources on our website, including access to a network of subject, expert, um, subject matter experts. Our next webinar will be two weeks from today on October 2nd, when Cliff Amico will present how to sell almost anything to anybody and feel good about yourself. Uh, you can find more specifics on our website at fairfieldcounty.score.org. Uh, just a few points about today's event. Um, as we do typically, we've set aside time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. If you have a question, you can use the chat window at any time during the presentation. It's located on the lower left, uh, lower left hand side of your screen. So please type in your question there and we'll take it at the end of the presentation. Uh, we will commit to ending sharply at 1 o'clock to respect your time. And the session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available on our website fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker. Gene Bronstein is a former sitcom writer and producer who has won numerous awards. During his 34 years in Los Angeles, he wrote shows for ABC, CBS, NBC, and the Cartoon Network. Gene also wrote for Jay Leno, David Letterman, the late Joan Rivers, and other celebrities. He's now back in Connecticut, and Gene's company, ComedyFacelift.com, specializes in helping businesses use humor in their marketing. I'll now turn it over to Gene. Gene, all yours. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining me here. I do want to make one little uh, correction to this, ent this intro that you gave me, which is very nice. All the awards I won were for bowling. I just want to, I just want to clarify that, because that's actually true. I don't want people to go, oh, he's a, an award-winning writer. Well, I am, but I, all the awards were for bowling. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. It's a lovely afternoon, uh, not raining at the moment, but uh, I am a, a former Hollywood uh, sitcom writer and all of that kind of thing, and this is my first webinar that I've ever done, so you're kind of like my guinea pigs, and I'm, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you can't wait to go home and put that out on your resume, but we're here, and uh, we're just going to dive into this thing, and we're going to see where we end up, so let me uh, click on this, and uh, all right, this is some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. I'm just going to list them all right off the bat so you kind of see what they are. And uh, that's basically the agenda for the day. Now, uh, I'm not going to read these aloud because I have a feeling most of you can read. And those of you who have hearing impairments or visual impairments, I hope you have really good devices that will translate this properly for you so you can look at it later and listen and hopefully get some, uh, something out of it, which would be a very nice thing to happen. Uh, and, and also, as Bob said, we're going to have a question and answer afterwards. So let's just go. And uh, let me see if this actually works. Wow, I'm amazed. Okay. Uh, comedy and humor. Usually we, we take these terms and we use them interchangeably. Uh, that's not unusual. I do that too. I make the distinction here between comedy and humor uh, even though we do use them interchangeably, but this is because they really are the same. And the reason I make this distinction is because one may be a better fit for you or, rather than the other, and there is a slight difference here, as you can see. We're all used to doing you know, the hard jokes like uh, comedians always do, but there's also a lighter side that you can delve into, too, and it's just a little softer, lighter, and witty, as you can see. Um, and you don't, it, the, the bar on this is a lot lower. You're not looking for the big laugh like you do with comedy. If you get, uh, you know, a little smile, a smirk, maybe even a little guffaw or chuckle, that is a positive thing when you're using humor. Now, the ATM up there has nothing to do with money. It just means according to me. 
It doesn't really mean that this is written in stone out in the, some desert somewhere that people are praying in front of. This is just, just something I put down so you know. This is my observation and my what I've come up with after all these years in humor and comedy. Okay, uh, once again, pardon me as I coordinate this thing. Uh, okay, uh, basically what we're talking about today is Using humor and comedy, which I've already said. Now, if you're, if you're marketing your business the same way your competitors do, what makes you different? How will anybody find you? How are you going to get noticed? What's going to set you apart from everybody else that's out there? Now, now think about it. You know, it, it's like if you have a friend saying, hey, we're going to meet at uh, Yankee Stadium, and uh, I'm going there first, so you'll be able to find me. I'll be the guy wearing the Yankee hat. That's not exactly going to work well for you. If you want to get noticed at Yankee Stadium, what you do is you put on a Red Sox hat, and your friends will find you really quickly, hopefully in time for you to get them to the ER, because they'll probably in, uh, be bad shape. Anyway, um, so that's that. I want to mention that. And uh, not surprisingly, every business that is out there thinks they have the best of whatever it is they're selling. And they believe that. And that's what they go for, and they think that, whatever that may be, gives them an edge over everybody else. And it doesn't, really. I mean, one of the things you always hear is, you have the best products. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. Everybody says that. Every place you go, you have the best products. I mean, nobody's going to say, hey, we have crappy products. Come in, buy twice as much because you're going to need it to get it done, whatever job you want to do. This is something people always say, so right away, you're on a level playing field altogether. Another thing people say is they have the best customer service. Well, that's not true either, because everybody says that. And you, you, you know as well as I do, if you call the company and you need some, let's say, tech help, what do you get? You get an announcement saying there's unusually large volume of calls coming in, and you have to wait a while or call back later, and you look at your watch, it's like 3.22 in the morning. Now, seriously, who's clogging the phone lines? It's all BS, but that's what people used, and they think this is going to give them the edge. It doesn't. One more. And you have the best prices. Everybody says that. Nobody says we have you know, crappy products and we have lousy products and prices, and they always say, you know, if you find something, the same exact item for less, we will match that and give you 5% more off. Well, if somebody comes in with that lower price, obviously you did not have the lowest price. And we had to shame you into giving us a little bit more than you were ordinarily going to be set to do. So what do you end up with after all of this, all this erroneous thinking that thinking you have the edge? Nothing. You're still on the same level playing field, and nobody's better than anybody else at grabbing attention here. And that is exactly what you need to do. You have to grab attention. Yes, you have to deal with, you know, Google, all the hopes, hopes, uh, hoops you have to jump through for them. But attention is what you have to get. Now, people may say, well, if humor is such a good, a good tool, why isn't everybody using it? Well, there are a couple of good reasons. That's a good question. There's a couple of reasons. The first one is it's risky. Using humor in marketing is risky. I mean, if the joke falls flat, you know, you're not going to look good. You may hurt your brand, and nobody's going to remember you. That's not a good thing. It is risky. But you know what? Opening a business is risky. Walking across the street is, is risky. I mean, Stealing a police car is risky, but we've all done that. I mean, come on. You know, everybody's done that at one point or other. So you have to get a clue. I mean, if you're going to buy a chainsaw, you've got to know what to do with it. The same thing with humor. But you know what is really, really ultimately risky? And this always amazes me every year. You watch the Super Bowl, and the big attraction there, aside from the game and the halftime, or right, maybe the third on the list, is – the, uh, the ads that come out, the brand-new ads debuting at the Super Bowl, which is one of the largest uh, television programs watched around the world. They get billions of viewers every year, 
and putting your ad up first and foremost at halftime at the Super Bowl is quite near insanity. You have to really know what you're doing. But the interesting thing about it, too, is even though all those people watch it, just to get a 30-second spot to put your ad at the halftime of the Super Bowl, that will cost you, at least it did the last couple of years, five and a half million dollars. That is just for 30 seconds of ad time. That does not include conceiving the ad, producing the ad, getting it out there, and seeing what happens. And if you have, let's say you have a celebrity who's hawking your wares out there in the ad, add another million dollars or so. So already you're like six, seven million dollars in the hole. Okay, so the ad finally shows up on TV. What happens? It's hysterical. People are loving it. They're laughing. It is the hit of the Super Bowl. They love this thing. They're going around and they're going, did you see that ad on the Super Bowl this week? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. The guy and his girlfriend are sitting in the, in the hot tub outside, and they're having a great time, and the guy's ex, ex shows up with a taser. Oh, my God, that was the craziest thing ever, the funniest ad ever. And you say, okay, that's, that's all well and good. What was the ad about? And they go, um, I, don't, I don't know, uh, toilet paper, I don't know, munchies, I, I, I don't know. But that was the best ad I've ever seen. Well, if your company is the one you're, they're talking about and you've spent $7 million and nobody knows what your product is, you just blew a whole lot of money, and I'm sure you're not laughing about it with everybody else. That's why you've got to be really careful with what you do. Now, does this mean you shouldn't make a funny ad? No. It just says that it's just saying that if you buy something, you've got to know how to use it properly and you get the most out of it. Okay, hang on a second. And let me just do this. I think I'm on time. I did that. Did that. Oops. Technical adjustment here. Better? Okay. Um, Another reason businesses don't think about using humor in their marketing, they don't think about it at all. They have no clue that they can use humor. They just want to go with the tried and true, and that's fine. You can do that, and you can be successful. You can actually do that without having comedy or any kind of humor in your marketing. Of course, your kids will probably hate you, and you know, you, your wife may leave you if you don't do it enough. But anyway, I'm, not, I'm talking about an ad now. Uh, so that's one of the things they don't understand. They can use humor and grab people immediately, but they don't want to try it. Okay. Another thing that they go by is they think, well, you know, their competitors aren't using the humor. So they start to psych themselves out. They think, okay, I'm going to use humor in my marketing, but, geez, you know, my competitors have been in business longer than I have. I've been, and they've never used humor in their marketing and maybe they know something I don't, and so maybe what I think I'm going to do is not do anything about it. I'll wait till they do it, and I'll wait to see what the results are on that, and then I will move on from there. Well, that's all well and good, too, but they may never do it, and you'll still be sitting there waiting to see what's going to happen. You're not getting the humor to work for you. Another one that they come up with and uh, – there's nothing funny about my business. Well, you know, that's okay. We're not here to make your business funny. We're not here to make you funny. We're not here to make fun of your product. Our objective, my objective, is to get you noticed, to make you different, to attract people, to engage them, to hopefully convert them to customers. And guess what? If you use humor with your marketing, it's fun. People like that. Another thing you'll hear from, and I hear from business owners, they don't want to do it, is because the humor is, is inappropriate for their particular product or service. Which means you, they think you can't have fun if you have a funeral home. Well, okay, maybe you can't have fun if you have a funeral home, but at least not during the service. Now, you can't tell me, though, when the service is over, and these funeral directors go to Vegas for their a annual ban banquet. You can't tell me that they're out there kicking it around. You know, they're having a great time. They're not just all these somber people all the time. They do have senses of humor. But 
honestly, like they said, it is inappropriate for their particular business. So therefore, you don't do it. Now, there is comedy available around death and dying. I mean, you think of Beetlejuice and four weddings and a funeral and weekend Bernie's. There is humor to be mined there, but if it's a business, you're better off not doing it, not trying to get it in there, because it's going to backfire on you big time. Okay, so we've heard some of the negative things, why you don't want to use humor. And the reason you should use humor, here are four and a half reasons you should use humor. First of all, it makes you different. We've already discussed that. But it's true. I can't say it enough. It makes you different, and there's nothing wrong with being different. You can turn these people possibly into clients and customers, and it's, it's not difficult to do. You just have to be aware of how to do it properly. And these, ta- these, <laughs> these days, it often will take, you know, seven, eight, nine times that they see your ad for you to really realize, oh, that product I can use because there's a lot more competition out there, and people are buying from all over the place. So it makes your ad a little harder to see, but you still have to give it an an oomph, which is why you need the comedy, because it gives you an edge. Okay. Now, even if, like I said, even if you just make make them chuckle or smile or anything like that, that's great. That's all you really need to do. Also, using humor, it grabs the attention, as I said. And it makes you more re, re, uh, makes you far more relatable than you would actually imagine. Let me just get these down here. Humor is relatable, and it breaks down the walls between you. And let me explain what I'm talking about here. Suppose you go to a concert, you go to a rock concert, and there's 35,000 people there, and you're outside and you're talking to everybody, and the concert hasn't started yet, and you're walking around, and people are drinking beer and having a great time. And conversations start instantaneously with people you've never seen before, nor will you ever see again. And it happens all the time. Suddenly, you're at the merch table, and there's a conversation, and you interject something, and they take you into the fold, into the conversation, and everybody is happy. And why does that work? It's simple. You're relating to each other. You have one common point in the conversation that you are all talking about, and that is the music. You have something in common that you both enjoy. We like the same music. So right there, you kind of look at the person a little bit differently than you would. All right, so you avoid the blood stains on the T-shirt. Okay, fine. But you talk to somebody there, and you're talking about the band, and you're talking about the music, and right away you're thinking, well, this guy is not that bad. He must be a good guy. Or they're looking at you and thinking the same thing. And the reason they're doing that is because you're making yourself very relatable. And that's important if you're going to break down walls with your clientele out there. It's very hard to do ordinarily, but throw some humor in there, and you've got a really good shot. Because even with humor, if somebody likes your humor, they kind of like you already because you're the one who put the humor there. So right away... That, that business has a little more of an edge than maybe a competitor because somebody has noticed that you did something different. It's not the same old, same old that we are all so used to doing. So that's really, really important about this. All right, let's do this. Humor sells. There is no doubt about this. Humor sells. Why does humor sell? It's because we love to be entertained. That's what humor is. Man has always told stories. We love stories. It's entertaining. It's a breath of fresh air. We are the most uh, entertained civilization that has ever been on this planet. We have phones. We bring our, we bring our entertainment with us now. We have phones. We can watch a, a baseball game, a basketball game, a concert, you can hear a record, you know, you can hear a record, a vinyl, whatever you want. It shows my age suddenly here. And you can bring your own orchestra with you. You can learn how to cook. All these things. You can play games. You can get on, uh, get on Facebook and talk to people. It's entertainment that people really glom onto. Everybody 
likes to be entertained. And that's what humor is. It's entertainment. And we know that because we like to laugh. It's a big part of our being. Now, suppose someone comes up to you and they say, you know, you want to hear a funny joke? Do you ever say, nah, never, I'm not hungry, I don't want to do that, nah, I don't want to hear it? Of course, you say, yeah, I'd love to hear a funny joke. Why? Because it's entertaining and you want to laugh. We don't laugh enough. So we have this, somebody's asking if you want to hear a joke. Yeah, I'll hear a joke. They tell you the joke and it strikes a chord within us because a joke really is a story. It's a very short story. Sometimes it's only one line, but it's something that we feel inside of us. Yes, we want to hear that. We love stories. And that's why people will go for humor because it's fun and it's, it really is a story. And we all like that. So that's what, one of the advantages of using this. How much time do I have? Another hour and a half probably, huh? Okay, good. All right, good. Uh, I don't have a clock, so I'm just looking here. Uh, entertainment, as I say, is key here. And you know who is one of the best entertainers out there? And this is a, uh, this is a local guy. This is a guy here in town, Stu Leonard. Now, I'm not going to you know, put an ad out for Stu Leonard, but i got to show you what he has done because you may not realize what he, the, the, the effect he has had on people. This is amazing. And you go to Stu Leonard's, and, you know, it started out in, what, 1968 as this uh, dairy place. Oh, by the way, if you, if you don't know who Stu Leonard is or what they are about, uh, as I said, they started out in about 1968 or so, and they were just selling, like, milk products and cottage cheese and regular cheese and things of that nature. And, you know, it kind of caught on because it was kind of unique. That's about all they sold. And you could go in there, and you could watch the milk be put in the bottles and the bottle cap being put on. And if you're a little kid, you find that fascinating, and you really enjoy that. And now they are this huge conglomerate, and they sell just about everything aside from milk and dairy products. They've got tons of stuff, and it is absolutely brilliant marketing. Here's what they do. They use entertainment to its fullest, absolutely. First thing you notice when you go to when you go to Stu Leonard's, you go to Stu Leonard's, and before you actually even enter the building, what do you see on your left hand side if you've been there? You see a place that's selling ice cream. So right away your mind is thinking, ice cream. I've got to have some ice cream. No, I'm overweight. With, I'm not going to do it. I'll not, I'm not going to get it right now. I'm just going to go inside, and I have my little kids with me. So we're just going to go inside and shop. So you go inside, and what do you smell? You smell baking bread. You smell coffee. You see they're making cookies. They're making all this food here, and they're touching the senses. That They're making you drool. It's great. But then one of the key things about this, and this is one of the reasons that parents love to take their kids to Stu Leonard's and why kids love to go, because the kids love the animation that they have there. If you've never been there, they've got like a monkey, it's like a mechanical monkey thing on a trapeze that's hanging over the ceiling. They've got a train, a little train that circles the area. You've got, you know, a, a couple of foxes in front of a hen house and they're dressed like farmers and they're singing a song. The kids love this and it makes it so much easier for the parents to shop. The parents know their kids are being occupied. They don't have a, crank, a cranky kid. I can get the shopping done. The kids are happy. All is well. And you see that every day. You never see an unhappy kid there. And, again, I'm not trying to tout this place so much, but I think their marketing is relevant to this. And it's very important to notice that they love having kids there. That's their main source. They love having the kids. And who can blame them? It's like Disneyland with food. So that's a great, great example. Another example of using humor really successfully, the For Dummies books. You know, the, those yellow and black books, they teach you how to do, you know, you know uh, algebra for dummies, you know, uh, plant growing for dummies, whatever. They've got it a book for it. 
and they have a little guy inside, a little cartoon character who helps point out what the good is, and you don't have to really pay attention to this, and they make it fun. And that is a key a aspect of this. The same thing with Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has that flyer. They've got that little cartoon thing that looks like from the 1700s, and they, they say the, the caption can be something like, oh, we have new cheese, please try it. It's a very smart thing to do. And humor is all the way through. That's all entertainment. Okay, now, let me, see, let, me catch, let me see if I have to catch up here before I move any further. I forget to do this. It makes marketing fun. That we've, we've covered. And this is the last reason is because I said so is why you should use humor in your marketing, because I said so. And I have proof to back that up, actually. So let me go over, and we'll go over to here. When you look at a website, the first thing you see is what? It's the headline. That is the very first thing you, your eyes gravitate to. This is why you need a really good, uh, you need a really good, strong headline to attract people's attention. If you get their attention, they're more likely to stay on your website to see what you've got. So if you can come up with something clever or something funny, and that's going to say to them, well, let's see what the rest of the site has. And they'll scan down a bit, hopefully looking for some other little tidbit which might be entertaining to them. And at that point, you know, they'll either stay or they'll bounce to some other website. So that's why you need a really good uh, website with a really, really good headline. Now, videos are really popular now. So you have a video that starts immediately. And that, that also helps. But if you have a website and insomniacs are going to your website so they can get peaceful sleep at night, you've got a problem. You've got a real problem there. Or, on the other hand, you might also have found a way to make a lot more money. But this is, a, this is symptomatic with a lot of the websites. Why? Because you look at the websites, they're all beautifully done. They're all done by professionals now, mostly. And they look gorgeous. They've got a beautiful graphic. They've got a nice headline with a nice font. The colors are nice. There's very little, uh, uh, there's a lot of white space, very few words on the page. It's, it, it's very pretty looking and all that. And people are reading them and they're getting good information from it. But the bottom line is most of them are boring. Most of them will put you to sleep in, like in five minutes. There's plenty there, but it's boring. And that is going to lose you visitors to your site. They're going to get bored. They're going to leave. That's not how you hold on to them. You have three to six seconds to make a good impression before your potential client bounces to another website. Three to six seconds. Your funny headline gets noticed because they're not expecting it. They're expecting the dull, boring uh, content that they always get. You're giving them something different, and it wakes them up. It's like, oh, my God, it's a joke. Wow. How different is that? Now, if you can keep putting little bits of tidbits of uh, humor in, your, in the rest of your website without overdoing it, it's like Little Red Riding Hood and the breadcrumbs. You, know, you can kind of lead them around, and they get little jokes, little bits of laughter or whatever or, as they're going through your website. And the main thing is that you are keeping them on your website. So they're seeing it. They're reading what you've got. Now, if your head, headline happens to suck, well, you can lose a lot of business that way. And if you don't keep an eye on it with analytics and all that kind of stuff, you're going to lose customers, and maybe your business is going to go south. I don't know. I can't say that's going to happen, but it's a possibility because people need to be entertained. Now, there are four surefire ways to grab attention. So how do you do it? Okay. A friend of mine is a very successful, retired now, uh, Madison Avenue ad guy. He's one of those guys you always hear about in uh, Mad Men and everything else. He was on, on Madison Avenue for years. Like I said, he's a very successful guy. And I met him one day, and we're talking, and he's telling me he's teaching marketing now. And I said, oh, that's cool. That's very cool. And we're talking. He, he says to me, you know, there are three ways, surefire ways, you grab attention. He says you use pets, 
you use uh, you know scantily clad people, and you use uh, anything else that's going to get your attention like that. Something quick, something noticeable. You put a cartoon up, things like that will grab attention. And so he said, after we were talking for a while, he said, you know, I forgot one. He goes, humor. I forgot to put humor in there. Of course, humor is a big seller. He says, it's true. That does sell. There's no question about it. And he said, I've seen it. So you can use babies. You can use pets. You can use naked people, scantily clad people, and add humor in there also. You don't have to mix them in all at once, but those are the four variations you can use. And they're and you have it straight from a guy who has been on Madison Avenue, humor sells. So how crucial is this point? Well, I'm going to tell you. I don't know if many people actually noticed this years ago, but television changed in about 1991 in a major way that almost nobody noticed. But it was, it was a major thing for television. And this is why you're getting, grabbing people by the shoulders and saying, this is what you need to do. Here's some humor. Everything changed in about 1991. I was a writer-producer on a show called Who's the Boss? And we had high ratings, but we were losing. We were slipping in the ratings, and we didn't know what, what was going on. And keep in mind, this is in days of B.C., before cable. There weren't 8,000 channels to to choose from. There were only three. There was ABC, NBC, and CBS. those, Those were the choices that you had. Watch a show on those or watch a rerun somewhere else. That was it. Now, all shows since 1948, when TV first became popular and people started buying them, all the shows started the same exact way. There would be a title card of the show. Uh, There might be some, you know, uh, some music in the background for it. That's great. And then they'd run, like, you know, pictures of the stars. And later when there was videotape, they'd have a montage of the happy family and Uncle Joe falling down the stairs. Whatever it was, that was the way TV was done. One day, the exec producers came into into the offices and they said, all right, everybody upstairs, we're going to look at something. So we went upstairs to a conference room. There was a TV set sitting there, and the screen was marked out into what we call a quad split. It's a regular, like a TV monitor, but it was divided electronically into four separate pieces. There was a a huge line going down the middle, horizontally and across, and up up, uh, vertically, to separate them. So you had two open slots on the top and two open slots on the bottom. In the first slot on the bottom was one of our competitors on a, from Tuesday night at 8 a.m., 8 p.m., and it was, uh, I don't remember the name of the show, but it was Who's the Bosses, one of their major competitors. The second little square, little tre- rectangle there was Who's the Boss? And that was there. It was a freeze frame of Tony Danza, and the third one was a freeze frame of some guy. Now, they started them, the producers started all three at the same time. So we're all running simultaneously. The first two, our show, Who's the Boss, and the other show, they were showing, you know, the the montage and the stars and the music and all that kind of stuff was going on. And the third guy, the third show, just went right into the story. They didn't do anything with the theme song. They didn't do anything with here the stars of the show because the people know that. And by the time we started our show, they had already hooked the audience. They had gotten the audience, and we found out that's where a lot of our viewers were going. They didn't want to sit through all the other stuff. They wanted it right now. They wanted their entertainment immediately. And so what happened the next week was we changed our format of our show, and ultimately all the shows did the same thing. They started out by going right into the show, and then they would do the credits and the stars and the montage and all that. It didn't take a lot of effort to change this. I mean, all we really had to do was change the two, swap the two first sections. We moved the title card to the second part, and we started the show right off with Tony or somebody, you know, entering the the kitchen. And, you know, chaos would ensue after that, of course. And that also changed movies. A lot of movies now, you look at a James Bond movie, there's always, it starts out, he's being chased, or somebody's chase, you know, or he's chasing somebody else, or somebody's after him in a helicopter. You never know. 
But they do that, they call it a teaser, to get you in there. And that's exactly what you're doing when you use humor. You are grabbing them by the throat and saying, look at this. Look at this. This is good stuff. And that's how you get people to look at your website or any other kind of medium that you're using. You've got to think outside the box and do this kind of thing because it's very important. Like I'm saying, you've only got three to six seconds. You've got to take advantage of that. So now that's what they call the cold opening, and everybody uses it now. Okay, so now what? That should be the next thing. I'm really late on these. Uh, I'm not used to using these clicker things these young kids use today. Uh, anyway, so these are the things, the cold opening. Now, what are you going to do with all this information and, and these ideas you have swarming in your head? Well, it's simple. You've, you know now you need to attract, engage, and ultimately convert people. But it doesn't mean that if you start using humor on Monday, you're going to have throngs of people on your website by Tuesday and you can retire by Wednesday. It doesn't work that fast. It's going to take a little time. People need to see your brand, your product, a, new, a number of times before they actually decide to buy, unless they desperately need it right away. People will be very picky because, again, you know, they're going on Amazon to check pri Amazon to check prices, and they're going everywhere else to look if they have it available and the color they want. They do a lot of research these days, but that's okay because. You can't turn it back, so you may as well go with it. A good way to get, find out what's going on, suppose you want to use, you want to redo your whole opening page, your, whole, your old, uh, want to get rid of your old uh, home page and put in a new one. Well, that's easy. You have to test it first to see if it's going to work for you. You don't want to just throw something up there. So if you have two different ways you can do the opening to your website, you can test them. Because each one of these two ways that you want to try out will be different. Maybe the font will be different. Maybe the color will be different. And you can get your SEO person or your web designer to go into more detail about this. But you can use this where you can test both of these types of openings and find out if either one is going to work better than the other. And when it does, that will be the one you will go with. And that will be, you'll know, you'll have confidence that, a, number of, a good number of people have seen it, and they voted more for this opening than they did for this home page. And that's a good way to test things out ahead of time. There are other ways to do it, too. But, you know, you may come across a, a situation where you say, well, if a competitor is already using humor in their market, it, I mean, now what do I do? Well, it's very simple. You use humor, too. I mean, if you packed up your bags after finding out one competitor – uses humor and you wanted to do it, that doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, you know, well, you know, if that's the thinking you're going to have, everybody would be driving Fords. There wouldn't be any, you know, Lamborghinis. There wouldn't be any Mercedes Benz, none of that. But the other car companies, other car makers said, well, I'm going to build the same thing, but I'll make mine better. So if you know people are going to be looking at your website and they're going to be doing these kinds of things, then you have to be aware that you have to be smart about grabbing their attention. That's all there is you have to do. It's difficult to do at times, but it's necessary. You can also get funny quotes out of the, out of the like Bartlett's or another magazine or use a comedian's joke. But if you're using a comedian's joke, it might be copyrighted material, so you probably would need to get permission from somebody, maybe the estate if they're passed away, but find out, check into it, and maybe you can use something like that. Anything with humor in it will stick pretty much with people in their minds, and they'll love it. They will. Okay. So I want to tell you something about a great way, a great source you can use. And you can use this, by the way, when you go home. And this will help your marketing tremendously. What you have to do, let me switch this over. And you look for royalty-free photos or royalty-free images. You do that online, and you will be flooded with what these things are. Now, royalty-free means somebody owns that image, but you can license it, and you can use the image. In other words, you're getting permission to use that image. 
And the great thing about royalty-free is you pay once and you can use it a million times or more. You can take a photo that you like. Let's say you're looking for a photo of a cat leaning on a windowsill, looking through the Venetian blinds, and the sun is shining through, and the lines are being formed from you know, the Venetian blinds. They're all over the room, and the cat looks striped now. And that's what you're looking for. They have that kind of photo. There's a company called iStock, which you see there on the screen. There's another one called Shutterstock. Morgue file, there are a zillion of these things. I think iStock is the, bi is the biggest one. And they are owned by Getty Images. Now, you don't want to mess with Getty because they are a huge corporation. And they have over 12 million pieces of media. They have photographs. They've got drawings. They've got artwork. They've got plain backgrounds. If you want a picture of a loving couple on the beach, they probably have 10 of those. You want an older couple sitting on, in the park, they've got that. They, you, can, you can also license things like videos. They've got video clips, not necessarily of you know, celebrities and things of that. But also you can use it. You, want to you need an, an airplane. You want to show an airplane taking off from LaGuardia. Well, they have plenty of pictures of airplanes taking off. I don't know if it's from LaGuardia or not, but it may help you with whatever point you're trying to make on your website. Go there. You'll be amazed at the stuff you find. They have pictures of flowers, bicycles, doorknobs. I mean, they name it. And, and by the way, if you look at websites today, all of the photographs, I'll say most of the photographs that you see there are done by professionals, the same people who you will find on uh, iStock and Shutterstock, Morgue File, and elsewhere. These are all professionally taken uh, shots and videos. You can even do it with music. You can license music, all from professionals. And you can do that and put them on your website. You can put them on T-shirts. You can put them on almost any marketing material you want. You can put them on a hat. You can put that image anywhere you want because you've got the license to do that. Now, I will emphasize that you must read the license. You've got to read the license because it's a legal document. And if you try to steal a cartoon or a piece of film or something, a picture of a flower. If you try to do that, and you, just because you're a small company, don't think they won't find you and sue you. You have to be very diligent about that. Don't try to cut corners with this. Fill out the uh, licensing agreement. If you don't know what it means, talk to the people there who are uh, at iStock or whatever company you're using. Talk to them have them clarify it, clarify it for you, or you can talk to an attorney, and they will tell you exactly what it means. Generally, the instructions for uh, using a licensing agreement is that it's pretty fairly readable for the average person. You can pretty much understand what they're saying. Most of it is things you can't do. In other words, you can't take something that they license, and you take the license, and then you sell it to somebody else. You can't do that. They don't allow their their photos and everything else that they've got they don't allow it in like you know adult films they don't allow it if it's for a hate hate speech uh website they won't do that and if they find out you actually took one of their images and used it without permission they won't they will not send you a letter saying well you know we would really appreciate it if you wouldn't use our material anymore without asking us no, they won't do that. They'll go right ahead, and they will sue you, and they will send you a letter. We're suing you, and you will lose because you didn't pay for whatever it was that you took. And there's no reason to have to go through that. You know why? Because the prices on these things are remarkable. You can get a cartoon, a professionally drawn cartoon. On some of them, what, 12 bucks, or it might be 20 It depends on how good the uh, photo has to be. In other words, if you're using something for your website, you need a higher uh, you know, quality film or a quality picture if you're doing a magazine cover, let's say. That you need it to be a top-notch uh, photo, and yet they have them available. You can, you can license them. So this is a great tool for you to use so you don't have to go out and draw pictures or take pictures or you know, they have, they've got cartoons. They've got cartoons for business business-oriented cartoons. This is great. I've got a couple on my website. And these are, again, professionally drawn cartoons, and they have a caption. 
And if you have the license to it, you can change the caption, you can flip the image so it's mirror image, you can do all sorts of things, and they tell you, you can, you can do it in your marketing. They give you permission to do it. And they all have different little uh, parameters that you have to meet. But that's okay. You do it, and you can use their material, and it makes a whole world of difference on your website. I guarantee you will see the difference. People will comment on it. So this is a great thing for you to do. And I guess my, I'm just about out of time here. So what I want to do is just you know, tell you, use these things that I've been talking about. Hopefully you'll have great success with them. Check out iStock and Shutterstock and all the others. It's really a phenomenal resource, and it can get you thinking about how you want to do more of your content in your website or whatever media you are using. So that's it for me, and uh, I guess we're going to do some uh, questions and answers. Anybody? Oh, my gosh. Uh, thanks, Gene. Um, we are going to use the, the rest of the time for um, Q&A, and we'll take as many as we can up until uh, 1 o'clock. So if you have questions, and we already have a number already, um, please submit them via the chat feature in the lower left-hand side of your screen. And um, maybe I'll start, Gene, with the, uh, with, with the first uh, question here. Um, for uh, – sorry, let me best back up a bit. Um, just a comment here on that for in a global business environment, um, and you have a diverse group of customers, they might not find some humor appropriate or um, might misinterpret it or even uh, find it offensive. Um, so I think the caution is we need to be um, exercise cultural sensitivity. So do you, do you have any comments on, on that? Because I think it is a, a fairly big concern in a global environment where not all humor is perceived the same way. No, that's, that's, a, that's a really good point to bring up because everything is global. Whether they're buying from you or not, they'll, they'll see your website. If you have any, I mean, you can't cover everything, obviously. You never know. You say hello to somebody. You don't know it, what it, you don't have to research what it, that means in every language. I mean, you use common sense. And, but if you really have uh, a situation where you're not sure and it might be a little, a little iffy to use it, what you can do is you can either not use it and play it on the safe side, or if you're going to certain areas, you know, check out if the, particular phrase you're concerned about means anything bad in whatever your area is. If you're going global, truly global, uh, all I can tell you is use your best judgment. I mean, you can't foresee every possible uh, word usage and in what slang is in every culture. Just try to do your best and go with, uh, is, is, that's the best I can tell you to do, because you're right, it is a global uh, problem when you're trying to do these things. Just use your best judgment. If you're really scared about using it, then just don't use it. You know, just uh, go on that side of it and don't really put yourself out there. Just say maybe I'll find something else to, to talk about, a different way to phrase it. Great. I think, uh, Gene, I think you might have covered some of this in the in the later slides of your presentation because this question came in part way through. But can you pro provide a little more information on um, on the how to, for example, you know, what makes a good headline? Um, some concrete info and, and, and steps. This is, this is, you know, it's all very subjective, of course, because what makes one person laugh doesn't necessarily make another person laugh. You can try it out on your friends. You can try it out, you know, if you think it's funny, if you know somebody who's a comedian. But, I mean, you can try it out on your friends and say, you know, say, you think this is funny. You know, you can actually just do that. You can hold focus groups, you know, a couple of your friends. You can do another thing you can do, which is kind of cool. Uh, if you have a couple of things you want people to look at to see if they're funny or not, you can do kind of like uh, send them a survey, lay it out for them, and tell them return it. Even if you're going to do regular mail, actually you should do this, regular mail for this. What you can do is you give them an envelope and a stamp so they can send back the reply if you want to do this. And that way, don't put their name on it. Tell them don't put return address on it. So that way, when they're looking at the envelope, they can't tell who sent it. And that way, they can be more honest about it. And they will give you a good critique and see what happens. And sometimes you just have to take a shot and say, well, I think this is funny, and a bunch of my friends think it's funny. I'll go with it. And if you get complaints, you know, well, then you have to deal with it. But at least you get a, a little sampling of some opinions. That's not a, you can do that. That's, that's okay. That's what I would do. Okay, that's great. Thanks. 
Um, here's, here's one uh, from Pete Grossman. With a, with a new client who desires to use humor but is apprehensive, do you suggest pitching some headline ideas to them first? Um, if, if you're talking to a client, I would do that. Um, I would definitely do that. I would talk to the client to see how they feel about it because they're paying for it. So I would definitely give them a shout. I mean, it, it'd, be, it'd be nice to do, you know, well, here's a surprise, and you surprise them with something funny. But if they're paying you, run it by them. Absolutely. That's what I would do. You like this. And they go, eh. and if you, if you really feel strongly about it, Pete, just say, well, it's good for this reason and good in this reason. I think this will be really good. And maybe you can convince them. That if, but if they don't really want to use it for whatever reason, just go with it. Just go with it. And uh, find something else. And a, and a related question, um, Geico disrupted the insurance advertising business using humor, which used to be very staid, cold, and serious. Do, you, um, do any other industries come to mind that you could uh, think of that follow Geico's lead? Uh, there actually have been, been a lot. I know, you know some of the Geico ads, which I thought were funny, didn't do well, I guess, and they, they disappeared quickly. They had a Tarzan one, which I thought was hysterical, but that didn't last long. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of there have been a lot of them over the years. Uh, to name one or two, it's really kind of hard to to think of one offhand here. But they have done that. You know, they've uh, you know Cheetos has had some good ones over the you know a couple of decades ago. I remember seeing a few that were really kind of funny. Uh, cars. Oh, there was one years ago that was really funny uh, for Isuzu, which I don't even think they make this car anymore. But they had a guy. The actor was David Leisure. And he played this really oily kind of car salesman, and he made these outrageous claims. He goes, oh, buy an Isuzu. You see this car? This car can climb this wall, and we get 180 miles per gallon. And he's smiling, and you know the guy is lying, you know. But they did it in such a clever way. It was funny, and they, made fun, they were making fun of the car in essence, but they were still getting a point, uh, across the point that the car was a good car. And you knew the guy was lying because it was just so outrageous. And it was funny. And they did that was probably about 10, 15 years ago. But it was, it was on for a long while, at least out in L.A. I know that. Oh, that's great. Um, the, the, there's one uh, comment here, and I, I think this is not more of a comment than a question, but it's um, asking, uh, could you please share some samples with humor in advertising copies, um, if possible, before and after copies, and um, you know maybe – that's something that's better answered through an email exchange, but if you want to comment on it, uh, uh, please do. Uh, well, that's a good thing, too. You know, my email is on the screen. If you have questions, and uh, that one is probably going to take a little longer, as you're saying, but email me, and I'll be glad to, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about it on the phone, or, you know, just email me, contact me, and we can talk about it, or we can do it email, however you want to do it. Glad to do that. For anybody who's actually attended this thing, you can always email me. I can't guarantee I'm going to gr immediately respond in a day or two, but uh, trust me, I will get to it. I will do it as quickly as I possibly can. Um, yeah, because there are a lot of different questions like that I, I'd like to answer and may not have the time here. So please do uh, mention that you were here and uh, contact me. Great. Uh, we do have a, a few minutes left for uh, questions. If there are any more, um, please submit them in the lower left-hand corner, and, um, and I'll just maybe, Gene wants to make a comment while we're waiting for uh, some final questions to come in. Yeah. Um, the one, the, one of the, the uh, questions before about uh, what industries have used humor, you know, I think almost any industry can use it. I really do. You have to find the funny in it, but almost any industry, because I get that all the time. I have, I have a client who says, you know, I've got a, I have a, bl I sell blinds, you know, window treatments. He goes, I don't know what's funny about that. If you want to take a stab at it, fine with me. And he's a client of mine now because I found something humorous about it, and he loved it. So you never really know. Uh, you know, it's I think and almost and even even funeral homes. I believe somebody told me that some local funeral home did try some humor on it. I don't know who it was or how well it went, but uh, I think any industry, if you look at it, of course not everything is going to be humor. Uh, centric here you can't you know you, you can't go to an oncologist and expect to see a lot of laughs obviously or things of that nature you know you want to stay away from obviously because they're totally inappropriate but uh, I think almost anything else you know people will love because people like to laugh that's great well it doesn't look like there's any more questions uh, at this point so uh, 
Gene, uh, th thank you very much, and I'd like to remind everyone that uh, the recording uh, will be available within the next couple of days on our fairfieldcounty.score.org website. And our next webinar will be two weeks from today on Tuesday, October the 2nd. And the topic is how to sell almost anything to anybody and feel good about yourself with Cliff Enico presenting. So on behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's uh, live webinar. And please fill out the evaluations that will be sent to you as you log off from the email. They um, do help us with um, future sessions. And so in closing, big thank you to uh, Gene Bronstein for presenting today, and have a nice day, everyone.